violence and other kind of violence. What's good, YouTube? It's the Black Gen Z Mindset. Make sure you go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, and let's get into the video. A weekend trip to Six Flags left one family crying, humiliated, and hurt. One mother tells 11 Alive her children were harassed by a man in costume who was working at the park. Joe Ripley shares the family's emotional experience and the park's response. So let's just give this whole thing some context. The guy who was harassing the, the little girl, this is a haunted house themed Six Flags. It's not your regular Six Flags where you're getting funnel I mean, they still got funnel cakes, but... You know, you might be eating your funnel cake and somebody pop out and scare you. This is a, a Halloween themed theme park at the moment, okay? Just for the season. So just just take that into account. A roller coaster of emotions. Mackenzie Hurd holds her children tight after a traumatic Saturday at Six Flags. Fright Fest wasn't supposed to be this scary. Look, don't bring your kids to Fright Fest if you are not ready to have them scared. Sad and hurt. With tears in her eyes, eight-year-old Marley Hurt says she had an experience she'll never forget. Mom Mackenzie says she had been at the park about an hour and a half. On her way to a ride, the family saw a man dressed as a cowboy, lasso in hand. Hurt says the man roped in two of her kids, ages eight and nine. Okay, hold on. Let's read what this caption said. This man had the nerve <clears throat> to say, girl for sale while being while he roped her i don't know who he is but that ish ain't cool at all i had to laugh it off like a dummy i'm not that old but isn't that how they sold slaves so obviously you can see that they're trying to paint this as a racial situation and maybe it was racially charged i mean he has the overalls and you know the the shirt the button down the flannel whatever you want to call it um but <laughs> and then they at black lives matter you know what i'm saying so obviously they're 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 charging as something racial just the man roped in two of her kids ages eight and nine she claims the man made a disparaging remark about siblings getting married in georgia he pulled the rope tighter around my daughter and then that's when he proceeded to say, I have a girl for sale for a dollar. Hurt says she reported the encounter with customer service, but according to Hurt, the manager said this quote happens all the time. Nobody should ever. It happens all the time. I'm pretty sure they do it to white people, white kids, Asian kids, black kids, Mexican kids. But, you know, when you do that to black kids, it's going to be... It's, it's going to feel like you're it's racially charged, um, especially since it's a white guy on the stilts. So this mother was upset, which honestly, I'm not really bugging about that. Yeah, the kid got scared at Fright Fest. That was the whole point. Have to go and feel so low and humiliated like that and, and then treated like pretty much trash. Six Flags sent us this statement in response to the situation saying, quote, we have zero tolerance for any form of racism, discrimination, or hateful behavior. The character in question is a third party vendor and not an employee at Six Flags. We will conduct a thorough investigation into this matter and take appropriate action. We looked at her arm and it was it pretty much rope burns um, made a, a signature in her skin. Hey, look, maybe he went too hard. Maybe he went too hard, but is it worth the news story? Like, and this is, this is how, like, this is, this is like the, how soft society's gotten that <clears throat> this girl for the rest of her life, her mom's going to be, remember that racist dude at Six Flags? He roped you up and he was trying to sell you like a slave, all that stuff. She's going to be like, oh, the, the country is racist because when I went to Six Flags, this dude said he was going to sell me like a slave. And, and I'm, I guarantee she's going to embellish the story and add on and all types of stuff. Oh, and he called me the N-word. This is how these things go. Now, I'm not saying they do that right now, 
but like a lot of sisters grow up and then they 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 formalize these microaggressions as they call them as blatant you know implicit racism and it's just not the case this mother wants a formal apology and compensation and despite hurting both oh uh, see now she's suing and this is why they don't want to let black folks nowhere because it's like y'all we want to go and i'm not mad get your money if if you can prove that she got rope burns hey it is what it is but like we always somewhere trying to sue both physically and emotionally Mackenzie hurt says she'll choose to forgive if something like this arises if anywhere you know report it you know because we as a country and as america need to come together and she's crying that her her kid got roped up in a lot of these stories I do, the family members aren't even crying when they're speaking about loved ones getting passed away. So she, <laughs> I feel like she's definitely putting on the waterworks and, you know, trying to up the severity of the situation. I've been to Six Flags. They've roped me up before. Oh, I got a kid sell for sale for a dollar. You know what I'm saying? You give the man a tip. I mean, that's for scaring your kid. That's usually how it goes. And that's the only way we can weed out racism. You should never be racist. Never be mean to somebody because of the color of their skin. Look, and now, <laughs> now they got that baby girl thinking that he did that just because she was black. Come on, G. A representative from Six Flags would not tell us who the man exactly worked for, if he was currently still working at the park, and how the park handled the entire situation. Six Flags only told us the matter was still under investigation. This morning, police arrested a Georgia couple after a two-year-old girl they were babysitting died. Juan and Nancy Martinez are behind bars in Hall County this morning. Police say the couple caused traumatic brain injury and other internal injuries to the child. So somebody apparently left their kid with the martinez family and it didn't end well guys you got to be careful of who you leave your kids with that's why you need a mother who's in the household and and if she does have a job hopefully especially with these times advancing she can earn from home but I don't think you should just be leaving your kids in daycares and all this kind of stuff. I've just seen too many instances um, where they are abused. Now, when I was a kid, there was I was never abused in daycare. Um, I was in like YMCA daycare and it was always cool, you know, but these instances definitely happen. Um, so I don't know if these are family friends of the toddler, but it's it's different. They're charged with murder and first degree cruelty to children. Um, so here was that little girl who passed away. Man, she was cute as a button. Um, anyways, let's get into the article. The attorney for a Gainesville woman accused with her husband um, of inflicting a traumatic brain injury and other injuries to a two year old girl claims his client was at work at the time of the incident. Juan Martinez, 31. And Nancy Martinez, 32, faced felony murder charges and a charge of first degree child cruelty, according to authorities. Hall County Sheriff spokesman Derek Booth said Juan and Nancy Martinez, who are married, were taking care of Valeria Jordan Garfias, too, at a home in the 2000 block of Bennett Circle with the toddler's parents or while the toddler's parents were at work. So, Tyler's parents were at work. They leave the kids with the Martinez, who ended up murking their kid. <sighs> Sheesh. The Martinez couple are accused of traumatic brain injury and other internal injuries to Valeria between noon and 2 p.m. Sunday, October 10th. And this is Gainesville, Georgia. This is about 30, 45 minutes away from where I am. The warrants obtained by the Times clarified that it was an internal injury to the abdominal region. Nancy Martinez attorney Arturo Corso sent a statement to the Times concerning the allegations. Valeria's death is a terrible tragedy. Nancy has known the child all her life and her mother since the two were just kids themselves. Nancy loves Valeria and Lorena very much. She is inconsolable. As her counsel, 
I can already see that whatever happened to this child clearly happened while Nancy was at work. I would be very, it would be very easy to verify her innocence with phone and work logs. I just hope that the official investigation doesn't end up with an arrest because these charges against Nancy are maddeningly unjust. I ask that our community can hold judgment, focus our in energies on prayer for the child's family, and let the justice system work. Though Nancy has no legal burden of proof as to her innocence, the state should expect a robust defense. The child was taken to Northeast Georgia Medical Center by Hall County Fire Services before being flown to Children's Health Care of Atlanta. Valeria died at the Atlanta Hospital. The child's body was sent to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation Crime Lab for autopsy, which Booth said Tuesday, October 12th, was still pending. Um, so as you guys can see, we got Nancy and Juan. Apparently, Nancy was at work, so she's trying to blame it on Juan. She's trying to blame it on her husband. She's saying her husband murked the child. Booth said authorities believe the Martinez couple were friends or acquaintances of the girl's parents. Funeral services for Valeria will be 2 p.m. Friday, October 15th at St. John Paul II Catholic Mission. The case is still under investigation. The family has established a GoFundMe page for funeral expenses, which y'all can find this article and hit that GoFundMe, which has raised 1300 as of 5.30 p.m. Tuesday. The sheriff's office did not immediately respond to Corso's claims regarding Nancy Martinez whereabouts Sunday. No attorney information for Juan Martinez was available. So it looks like Juan's going to get thrown under the bus. Um, so, I mean, it's... A horrible situation but hey man y'all gotta y'all gotta make sure y'all know who y'all leaving y'all kids with for real cuz it's different out here these folks on demon time six people from Indianapolis are now federally charged with making straw purchases of guns that's when a person buys a gun on the behalf of another person who is legally unable to make the purchase themselves. Investigators say that these people bought more than 90 guns since November 2020. So, um, as you can see, these guys who were making these straw purchases, they were supplying these guns, um, to multiple people, but mainly gang members in Chicago, um, who were then going on to spray up everywhere and, 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 you know, take a whole bunch of innocent lives of different people. Um, there was apparently a seven-year-old girl who was taken away by one of these guns. Um, and I believe it was, there was a situation where this guy, he, you know, urinated on this other man's grave. And then the rival gang came back and they spin the block on him while he was at McDonald's and they killed his seven-year-old daughter, which I believe one of these guns were responsible for her murder. Well, not the gun, but the person with the gun, but the gun was used in her murder, okay? Because we're not skirting the accountability of these individuals who are actually committing these crimes. We're not blaming it on the gun. I'm definitely pro-Second Amendment. Um, I believe everybody should, you know, e e express their right to bear arms, so. More than 20 guns were later linked to crimes in Chicago. Eight other people, all from India as well, were charged in straw, purchases case, straw purchase cases earlier this year. Acting U.S. Attorney John Childress also says that in a statement to News 8, despite the fact that those who illegally provide those firearms may never pull a trigger or brandish a firearm during a crime, they are significantly responsible for the destruction and harm resulting from the use of those firearms and as a result will be vigorously investigated and prosecuted in the Southern District of Indiana. So the last story we got, man, is Hitman Holla. And if you guys don't know who Hitman Holla is, we'll go to his Instagram real quick. Um, this is him. You know, he is, uh, he's a part of Wildin' Out. Um, he's a part of Wildin' Out. You know, he's a battle rapper. Uh, you know, he's out here. He's, he's living a good life. But he has gotten into some things recently. Beefs and whatnot. And, you know, it's like he's... He's living a great life 
as a black man especially but he still is towing the line between the street code and this that and third and this is what normally happens with a lot of black men even though they're living good lives they still want to seem hood and want to seem hard so they're beefing with people they don't have no business even associating with they they're still going back to the hood and trying to get some type of validation from the black community that they're that they're you know that they're hood and they're you know they're able to go back to the hood and they got shooters everywhere and and that type of like he's trying to kind of live that lifestyle as well and it looks like it's backfired on him i'm not gonna say wh who or why this happened obviously this could be absolutely a random event um because we know how uh brothers is working nowadays they're on demon time so maybe he was flexing too hard they found out where he lived and you know chose to go hit him up so you know it could be a random event but it could also be targeted because of the way that he carries himself and lives his lifestyle and the people that he's beefed with and had conflicts with in the recent um past so anyways <clears throat> Prayers up. Hitman Holla shared disturbing news. He wrote a post on social media saying his girlfriend was shot in the face while on FaceTime with him. According to Hitman, four men. Woo! Four men. And they don't give the identification, but we can already go. Four black men ran into his girlfriend's home and shot her, he said. Imagine being on FaceTime while your girl being out of town and she's telling you it's people in the house at one in the morning. So coaching her on what to do 1,000 miles away. She showed courage. Oh, we got to add. Hold on. There we go. Uh, she showed courage and let off shots defending her home. I'm so proud of how she was so brave. I can't stop crying, man. Please send positive energy our way. I need it, y'all. I really need it. Jesus, this ad. <laughs> I've never felt this kind of pain. This message was for my fans, family, and friends all at once. Please help us get through this. Take a look. Um, so he says, last night, <laughs> and this is not funny, but, you know, it, 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 it qualifies everything we've been saying, right? Black lives matter, but they, they have to matter to black people first. And that's what it is, you know? We need to value our own lives for others to value our, like, you know, our lives. And that's just the real deal. So he goes, last night, four N-words broke and ran into our home and shot cinnamon. How, I mean, if they're masked up, how do you know they're N-words? Because every black man understands this, that the only threat to your life, most likely, on a balance of probabilities, is other black men. That's why you get mean mugs from black men. That's why you get, you know, you, you get in random beefs. That's why you got to post up in the club and act hard because you know that if another black man feels like you're soft, it can go down and you might have problems with that brother. So he says, last night, four N-words broke and ran into our home and shot cinnamon. Bullet went through her cheek and out the back of her head. She's at the hospital now being strong. Send prayers my way because y'all couldn't imagine what I'm going through right now. Pray for me too because I'm ready to lose it all. So he sounds like he's wanting to get retaliation. He's wanting to get his get back. And you can see that, you know, his girl is a beautiful woman. And I know it made him sick that he wasn't there to protect her. But it looks like these in words got the drop on him and you know they were staking him most likely and, and and knew when he was going to be out of town so they could target his home posting on social media doing all this stuff posting where you're going to be i know you're doing promotion but this is how the world is especially when you got a lot of these brothers out here you know um who quite frankly i mean hillary clinton wasn't wrong when she said it was a lot of super predators out here and it and now they call themselves savages and demons and all types of different vernacular and slang. But it's unfortunate that this is where the black community has gotten. Hitman Holla, he has over a million followers on Instagram. And these are the people that a lot of our brothers um, 
end up targeting. We end up eating our successful, eating our young, and unfortunately, this is the state of the culture. Gang violence and other kind of violence. So it is what it is.